and we are live welcome hello homemakers and everyone in the chat or on the replay tonight we are going to welcome larry and hope where to the show they are going to tell us how to save money on our food bills despite rising inflation but before we get into that Welcome to Homemaking with Purpose, where we bring to you the best ideas, interviews, and information for today's homemaker. I am your host, Denise Jordan, and tonight's sponsor is, as always, Apron Diva. Pretty and practical, we believe that an apron can be a homemaker's best accessory. And continuing to be on sale this week are the recipe aprons, the cookie, where it has this little chocolate chip cookie recipe on the front, and then also the uh, carry, which has a caramel apple recipe. These little beauties will make the perfect Valentine's Day gift for yourself or for your mom, your aunt, your sister, or any foodie in your life. And you get if you buy the apron with one of the recipe cards, you get that whole little bundle at 25% off. Okay, so let's welcome Larry and Hope to the platform. Hello, Larry and Hope. Hi. Hi. Thanks so much for having us on. We're so excited. Oh, I am so glad to have you guys here. I just have to say, I've been watching food prices go up and up and up at the grocery store, and my food budget is certainly buying a little bit less. So I am in need of all of this information that you guys are going to share with us tonight. And I want you to know, Kate Caden, she was on a few weeks ago, suggested that I have you guys on. We love Kate oh, yeah. so much. Yeah. Oh, isn't she amazing? She All is right. incredibly enthusiastic. Yes, she is. So hello to the chat. You guys have got, we've got lots of people that are joining us already. So just to remind everyone, if you have a question, put in a hashtag Q in front of the question. And then that way I can see it. Mickey Blue Skies isn't going to be with us the whole time tonight. Uh, oh, someone is saying hi, Blue Skies. So she must be here somewhere. But she will pull our... A winner for the apron note, but for the most part, I'm going to be looking for the questions myself. So hashtag Q to let me know there's a question there. All right. So let's start with your homemaking journey. Oh, I forgot to turn my iPad down. I always think I'm ready. And there's always some little thing I forgot. And it was turn off the iPad. All right. So let's start with your homemaking journey. All right, so Larry's going to give you like the overview, and I'm going to fill in all the juicy details. Well, okay. <laughs> when, first of all, I want to say thank you for having us on, and we're just thrilled to be with your group tonight. Um, Hope and I met in college back in about 1982, and we were both studying broadcasting. She went into radio, and I went into television. And we dated for a while, and we broke up, and we got back together. While we were broke up, I was praying for a gal that could handle money. Little did I know it was the gal that I had originally dated. <laughs> so we got married in 1988. So we've been married for 33 years. And through that time, we've had a family. We have four boys. The oldest is 25. And then we have a 23-year-old, a 17-year-old, and a 13-year-old, all boys. And we just love them. We have a great time with them. Hope! Four boys! I know it. <laughs> I said, you know what? Like, I am the queen of the castle, so I'm totally and completely good with that. <laughs> oh, she gets, she gets treated with royalty. All right, I like it. Now, Hope, you were going to fill us in on the juicy details. Yeah. So in regards to homemaking, so Larry and I were married for eight years. We went through several years of infertility. We just could not get pregnant. And so when we finally got pregnant with our first son, I was 32. He was 39. And we'd always intended for me to go back to work. I worked in radio. I loved radio. I intended to go back. And the minute I got pregnant, I was like, I'm not going back to we, work. We knew she was going to be a stay-at-home mom. We, we both said it at the same time. 
I, I knew that I, I was really feeling called to be at home with that baby. I waited so long to be a mom. And so, but by quitting my full-time position in the full-time workforce, we cut our um, not too big salary already down 40%. And so that was when I got really serious about figuring out frugality and how to shave money off of every single area of my budget. And that's when I kicked it into high gear. I've always loved reading. I've loved research. And so that sort of went hand in hand with me figuring out exactly how we were going to live on one income. Okay. All right. I like it. Well, we've already got our first question. So before we go to the questions you and I have already talked about, we'll just jump right in here with Susan Henry. And she says, how you save a lot when your family has loads of allergies. Okay. Actually, I've gotten this question before from one of our viewers. So what I suggest that um, people who have allergies do is you need, you need a master list. You need to create a chart of each person. So put each person's name across the top and then down the side of it, you're going to list different kinds of foods. And then that if that person in the family can eat that food, you're going to put a little check mark in the box. So what you wind up with is a master list of foods that everybody can eat. That's the master list you're going to go by when you are cooking. The other thing that I suggest is really when you are cooking with allergies, like years ago, um, Larry decided to go gluten-free for the most part and to go sugar-free for the most part. And so when he went gluten-free, I had to figure out different ways that I could create gluten-free, particularly baked goods. I mean, I know everybody, if that's the allergy, then y'all give me a big amen. I can see it because it's gluten-free uh, products, particularly the pre-made ones, really, really expensive. So as much as possible, I figured out how I could do it from scratch. So become an expert at what you can eat and doing it as much as you can from scratch and finding places where you can buy it in bulk too. That helps. Okay. So now you talked about being able to make those things yourself from scratch. So I'm just going to jump ahead and just ask you, there was something in one of your videos about becoming a DIYer. And I think this is the perfect time for you to talk about that. And just so you know, I hate DIY. Anyone that watches this channel knows I absolutely positively hate DIY, but I don't think you're talking about the kind of DIY I'm talking about. So can you fill us in on that just a little bit? This is a great story because we were prepping for that video. Our channel, by the way, is under the median. I don't think we've mentioned that yet. So y'all, it's under the median. I forgot. And, <laughs> no worries. Uh, we were prepping for a video and Larry goes, you know, honey, when we're talking about saving money on groceries, I think people need to be a DIYer. And I kind of gave him one of those sideways looks too. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So he explained what he meant. Yeah. Um, I forget what I explained. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about becoming, uh, grabbing all of oh. those, um, those old fashioned skills that your grandma knew how to do and bringing them into 2022 and learning to do them. So learning how to can, learning how to freeze food, being a do it yourself or meaning that you learn how to store foods and how to buy some in bulk. And that, that's what we mean by being a do it yourself or. Those old fashioned skills, I fully and completely believe with my whole heart, they are going to come back into vogue because people are going to realize the necessity of figuring out how to store food and prep it for later term use. Okay. All right. So then let me just ask you this then. So you've talked quite a bit about your grocery budget for a family of four. And can you tell us a little bit about like how much money you guys have set and then like how much do you plan to spend? How much are you actually spending? And then what strategies are you using to stay within budget? Because I will admit, I don't have a grocery budget. I just go to the store and I just shop and just buy whatever. And then I, I'm like, oh, well. And I had to run out for a few things today. And my husband was like, babe, you just bought some things the other day. I said, yeah, but I needed a few things. And then, of course, I picked up more than the few things. So I decided after listening to you guys, I'm going to set a budget. So let's talk about your budget and how you stay in there. All right. So our budget to feed a family of four in 2021 was $300 a month. But <laughs> we, we were also working on saving money to buy a bulk load at 
an Amish store that's about uh, about an hour away. So we had to cut that back to adjust for that amount. Right. So our goal was to spend less than that because we wanted money left over to stock our long-term food pantry. Now we actually wound up stocking the long-term food pantry and feeding the boys. And we spend an average of $225 a month. That was after stocking up too. Wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So that was the total amount we spent in 2021. For okay. So how, what strategies were you using then to stay within that budget? Because I'm thinking I can spend $225 in one week and it's just two of us here. So what yeah. strategies did you employ to do that? Okay. Well, one of the things is we are a vegan family. So if you don't buy meat and dairy, that's going to cut an awful lot out of your budget right there. Because, the, the, you know, of course, we know meat is one of the items that's really been skyrocketing in price here in the last few months. So that's the that's the first thing that helps us keep our costs down. So we tell our viewers, look, not everybody that watches us in is vegan. In fact, most people who watch our channel are not vegan. Mm -hmm. So we tell them if you really want to save go to a couple of meatless nights a week and that will save you more money than you think it will. But let's just say you're like, I am just not going to be vegan. That's okay. You can still save money. Uh, here's three or four more like top. These are like the top ways. These are like at the top of the chain of what we did. We don't buy prepackaged foods mm -hmm. at all. And uh, so what Hope looks for is single ingredient items. You should be able to look at what's on your plate and look at it and say, this was made with all single ingredient items. Now I'm not talking about a can of corn, that's a single ingredient item, or a can of beans, that's a single ingredient. I'm talking about uh, those pre-made dinners you can get, all that kind of stuff, that, that the food that's prepped for you. Look, um, so here, here is an analogy. If you go into the store in the middle of summer and you buy a whole watermelon, and sitting next to it is watermelon that's been cut up into pieces, which you're going to pay more for. The watermelon's been cut up. Right. Somebody else did the work for you. Well, if you're willing to do a little more of the work, you can save a boatload of money. So we primarily cook with single ingredient foods. So uh, the next thing that we do is? Know what you have on hand. So we take an inventory of what we have in our pantry and all our pantry is, is just some cupboards in the back of our basement. It's not like some huge store, but it's very well organized. Hope has it categorized. She has uh, you know, the canned goods in one place, coffee, everything is so we can open it up and pretty much at a glance, yep. see what we have. Yeah, I tell people within 30 seconds, you ought to be able to open your pantry and know what's in there and more importantly, know what is not in there. So know what you have on hand. And when you get ready to go to the grocery store, you should be planning what you are going to cook based on what is already in your house. So don't like scour the internet going, oh, that recipe looks real good. I think I'll just go out and buy everything it takes to make that recipe. You're going to spend substantially more every single month on food if you are cooking that way, rather than looking at what you already have and saying, oh, look, I have a whole lot of potatoes. Right now I've got a whole lot of baked potatoes. They were on sale at Kroger. And so I'm going to be looking at those saying, what can I put with those? And what do I really need to purchase from the store in order to make something to go with the baked potatoes? But the baked potatoes, because they're bought, they're paid for, they are in my house. They're going to be the basis for what I'm going to plan my menu around next week. I really like that. And one of the things that I've been doing in some of my videos, I've talked about it, but I haven't actually shared the entire process, is what I call shop your shelves, which is what you just talked about. Mm -hmm. is you shop your shelves, take a look at what you've already got, and then look at some additional things. And you talk about that quite a bit in your videos. The other thing I thought was hilarious when you said that you look at recipes as a suggestion. Talk about that because I just, I had to crack up when I heard that. Look, I'm, I'm one of those cooks and I've taught, I, I taught my boys to cook, especially like our 17 year old son. He loves to cook and he'll be in the kitchen just without me in there, like making up recipes. And he cooks like I do. He's like, well, I'm just going to put a little bit of this in here and a little bit of that in there. And so trying to follow up my recipes can be a little bit difficult. But really looking at recipes as suggestions, look, you have to figure out what you can substitute. You've got to be able to look on your shelf and say, oh, look, I don't have broccoli, but I've got cauliflower. 
-hmm. Can I substitute cauliflower in that soup instead of broccoli? And will it still be okay? Probably it will. Once you learn common sense substitutions, you wind up being able to cook without actually buying anything extra from the grocery store because you figured out how to substitute using what you already have on hand. And another just caveat with that is that let's say you're trying to make something at home and you don't have the actual ingredients, you can very easily just Google what can I substitute for tamari sauce? What can I substitute mm -hmm. for cauliflower? And Google will give you a bunch of different suggestions. So that is certainly one way to get that information. And something else, just backing up a little bit, when you talked about one ingredient on your plate, I, when I went to the store today, I was going to buy this bag of quinoa and long grain rice at Kroger. Mm -hmm. It was like five dollars almost and i looked at that and then i thought do they have a bag of quinoa somewhere here just by itself because i'd been looking for quinoa for a couple of weeks and i went to a different store today a different quarter than i normally go to that's another thing you talked about in when you make your runs to your various mm -hmm. stores but i found a bag of quinoa and it was like 550 but that one bag of quinoa with long grain rice that I already had at home, I can make that little dish that I was going to purchase that bag for probably 20 or 30 times over with the money that I bought for that. So, yeah. And you know what? The other yeah. thing you can do, there, there is no sin in taking your cell phone, turning that bag of quinoa and rice over, snapping a photo of the ingredients so you kind of know what they put in it, right? Right. And right. saying, oh, so I just need to add this and this and this and this. Because, you know, that's I, that, that's what cell phones are for, right? You can just take the ingredient list and say, well, I got all the rest of this stuff at home. And that's what I've been doing. I've really been trying to do a better job of doing that, of just kind of really living living the life. I I'm, I did the low spin January or the no spin January with Kate Caden. And then um, I really focused on just cooking and using what was in my pantry and that kind of thing. And so now it's like most of the time I just think, okay, so what am I going to cook? I don't even think about eating out for the most part. It's like I'm actually living the life. And so that has been very, proved to be very, very helpful there. <clears throat> You know, what's interesting to me, I, I think we're, we're creatures of habit far more than we realize we are. And people go to the store just because it's Friday or they go to the store because they're bored or they go to the store because they just don't want to go look at what's on the shelf. I mean, there are so many reasons why we shop, but because we actually need some food, sometimes that's just not one of them. So many times I go to the store and I'm like, I didn't really need this stuff. It's yeah. habit. Like you said, every Friday you go to the grocery store, every Saturday morning. So, yeah, it can be a habit. Well, let me ask you this. Can you talk to us about inflation proofing your pantry by stocking up? Yeah. So the thing with stocking up is if you are willing to buy when there are sales. So when... Uh, food goes. So there are two kinds of, 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 of sales cycles. There's a cyclical sales cycle mm -hmm. and there is a seasonal sales cycle. So an example of a seasonal sales cycle is um, is cabbage. Mm -hmm. Cabbage is going to drop in price near uh, St. Patrick's Day. Right. It's going to go down because everybody wants to make their cabbage. Okay. And so it's going to go down to 39, 49 cents a pound. So if you buy cabbage, then you're eating 49 cent a pound cabbage. Uh, strawberries. Mm -hmm. Strawberries are going to drop in February, March when the new crop comes in. You're going to be able to get them. Well, you could last year. <laughs> Who knows what they're going to be this year? You get them for around a dollar twenty-five a quart for strawberries. It, all you need to do is just buy several quarts of strawberries. Last time I found strawberries, I saw I found them on, at Aldi's, marked down to ninety-nine cents a quart. I wow. bought like twelve quarts of them. I came home, I washed them, I hauled them. I put them on baking sheets that were lined with silipat in a single layer, let them freeze, put them in freezer bags. And in December, I'm eating strawberries that are 99 cents a pound or 99 cents a quart when at the store they're four or five dollars a quart. That is like the trick to getting ahead. It's the same thing with, uh, for instance, pasta. Pasta is going to go on sale traditionally every eight weeks or so. That's a cyclical cycle. It comes around yeah. in a, yeah. 
in a circle. So you just wait for it to go on sale the next time. You know, in about 10, 12 weeks, it's going to go on sale again. But if you will stock up on that pasta when it's marked down and you can get it at Kroger with your Kroger card for 49 cents a pound, then once again, you're always eating 49 cent a pound pasta. You're not eating pasta at whatever it is when it's not on sale. So in, in a sense, when you stock up on an item that's on sale and put it in your pantry, mm -hmm. you're freezing the price mm -hmm. for a short period of time that that's going to last like while you're that. using it up. So Hope froze the strawberries and you said you're freezing the price. I like yeah. that. <laughs> okay. So then let me ask you this. I have been um, encouraging my viewers, my homemakers to stock up. I've really been encouraging people to do that. And sometimes I feel like Cassandra that I'm just talking to an audience, but nobody is either listening or they're not paying attention. So what would you say to encourage my young homemakers particularly, and then even my seasoned homemakers, how to stock up? Having a well-stocked pantry is not only a hedge against inflation, it's a hedge against life happening. It's a hedge against emergencies. 24 months ago, none of us would have thought that the virus who shall not be named would turn our lives upside down. None of us thought, Larry and I, just last week, we had kind of a semi-emergency, I guess. We had a huge... Well, we had a, we had a 10-inch snowstorm that basically shut the city down. We, we wouldn't have been able to have even gotten out to a store for a couple We of had one here. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And in Tennessee, had, I know some ice storms that, that cut power off. So you're going to have some unexpected things happen in life. And it's good, just like you have money in the bank for emergencies, you might want to have some food in your house that, that you have on hand in case the unexpected occurs. It's a hedge against like job loss. How many of us have been through job loss? We have. Yeah. He yeah. got, he came home one day and said, hi, I got laid off. I was like, well, this is an adventure that we weren't expecting. Mm -hmm. Life happens when you're not having a pantry that's stocked up. Look, your pantry, your stock of food that is sitting in that pantry is kind of your life raft. Mm -hmm. When an emergency happens, you can use that pantry and the food that's in that pantry to float you along as far as your food budget is concerned for a period of time and use that time wisely to figure out what your next step or your next move is. But here's the truth. If you don't have that pantry, do you know when your next move is? The next day, because you don't have that stop gap and you don't have that pantry to float along on. Exactly. You are so correct there. And I, I look at it, it's your insurance. It's like your food insurance. You use your health insurance and your homeowner's insurance to help pay for emergencies that happen. And your pantry is your food insurance for that very same reason. We did go out and we did pre-snowstorm shopping like most of the world did. And then we were like shut in our house for three days but there were probably those people that weren't able to get out and do that. So, yeah. You know, it's funny. Our One of our sons got sick last week before the snowstorm. And Hope was on the phone with him and said, you know, do you need anything that we can bring you since you are, you're home and can't get out? Well, that was the day before the snowstorm. Mm -hmm. So she went out to a couple of the major stores and she took pictures because those shelves were virtually picked clean. Yes, yeah. So I was, he sent me with a list and I said, I'm going to do my best. You got most of what he asked for. I got for, everything though. he asked for, which was like an act of God yeah. because those shelves in Aldi, I have never, ever seen like shelves that bear in my life. Yeah. Wow. It was so I, I know what you're saying though. And the main reason was those people who cleaned the shelves panic bought because they didn't have mm -hmm. the food stored up in their house. We weren't planning okay. on going out. Exactly. So I let me. Mom, I was a good mom, and I went shopping for my grown child. <laughs> but your grown sick child. Yes. yes yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the difference. So let me give a quick recap. So for those of you that just joined us, we have Hope and Larry on with us from Under the Median, and they talk about frugal living and budgeting on their channel. And let me just show it to you again real quick. Let me find my shared screen. Oh, what's this? 
you guys are going to laugh, but I have to talk through it every time. So what this is doing something weird right now. There we go. And we are going to. This is their channel under the median. And um, they talk about living with joy and abundance on a shoestring budget. And they talk about trying to inflation proof your budget and doing all sorts of things. And here you can see some of the kind of videos that they do. So that's who is with us today. And let's just check in with the chat and to see what questions they have. And we've got one here from Susan Henry who says, what's the best day to go shopping? Susan, that depends on where you're shopping. Okay. So um, we have a small locally owned ethnic grocery store here that we love to shop at. And I happen to know that they get their shipment in on Thursdays. Now that means if I stop by on Fridays, they're going to have some produce that's been sitting on their shelf for a while that they're willing to sell me at a discount. So you need to know when those stores are stocked. You also need to know when the sales cycle begins at that store. So for instance, here, uh, Kroger starts on Wednesday morning. The next sales cycle starts. So if you're going to get something that's at a really good price, you're going to want to go on Wednesday. The time that's really bad to shop, we have found, is? Oh, well, the weekends. Saturday. We hate Saturday shopping on Saturday. Awful. And I'll tell you, the best the best night to avoid crowds is Monday night. Monday night, night. That's yep. the great. Now, we had another, another Kroger store. We have about three in our city. Uh, they do markdowns. So they'll mark down expired uh, vegetables like salad uh, mixes and so forth. And Hope asked the manager, what is the day that you mark down the most packages? And in that case, at that time, it was on a Tuesday. So then we would go in on a Tuesday mm -hmm. and gather up all those wonderful markdowns based on what Hope found out from that manager. So you might want to ask around. It's going to be different in your area, and it's going to be different for each store. Okay, that's genius right there. Just to ask, when are they going to do the markdowns and then find out about those? Yeah. I like that idea. And, and they'll be glad to answer you because they would rather you, you buy the items at a markdown than them have to throw it out. Okay. Um, let me just ask you this other question too, and then it'll be time to give away an apron note. Yeah. Um, but I've already got this question in my mind, and it is about the one fifth rule that you guys talked about. Um, so you guys talked about having one fifth rule or some kind of one fifth process when you purchase gro groceries on a budget because this particular viewer says they don't have a lot of extra money to build out an extended, an extended pantry. So what can they do? And I wondered if this one fifth process can help them. So talk about your one fifth process. That, I just thought that was so interesting. This is exactly how we have stocked up without raising our food budget. So you're going to look at your total food budget for the month. And because I like easy math, we're going to say $500. Okay. You buy that food budget in fifths. That means that you have five units of $100. So that's 500 divided in fifths. You're going to take $100. That's 20% of that food budget. Set it aside. That's your stocking up money. That's the money you're going to stock your pantry with. That's the money you're going to use if you find a, an amazing deal on markdowns. That's the money you're going to use for that. That other $400, you've got four weeks in the average month. You've got $100 for each of those four months or four weeks in the month. And that's what you're going to use as your working grocery budget each of those other four weeks of the month. Okay, I like that idea. So take 20% of your grocery budget and set it aside for building your extended pantry or finding things that are amazingly on sale and using it for that. And what if you don't spend it that week? Oh, Save then you can up. hold it over. It That's that glory. We did this last year. We knew that we wanted to go on a major shopping trip. There's an Amish community about an hour from us. Yeah. And um, so Larry said, I want to make a trip in April. 
Yeah, we'll buy uh, 50 pound bags of black beans, 25 pound bags of lentils, 50 pound bags of rolled oats, mm -hmm. and another 50 pounds of steel cut oats, plus about 25 pounds of cream of wheat. That's just a start on it. <laughs> <laughs> so to set that money aside, I deliberately underspent each okay. of the months of January, February, and March. But I didn't spend that money. I held it to the side. I'll let you unplug that real quick. All right. Sorry about that. We unplugged every other phone in the house. Um, uh, so then I, uh, I rolled that over so that I kept that set aside. And when April hit, we were able to call the Amish store, order what we needed, and go pick it up. Okay, so I really like that 20%. And I tell you, Hope, I get a lot of people who talk about, you know, my budget is really tight. I'm on a fixed income and it's very limited. There's no way I can buy anything extra for an extended pantry. But I think you just showed us how that can happen. Just if you've only got $50 to yeah. set aside for groceries that week, then 20% of that $50 is going to be... Was it well, twenty dollars or ten dollars or something like that? Mm -hmm. So, and then you're going to use that and spend ten dollars on building your extended pantry. So now the question is going to be: If I've got this ten dollars or this twenty-five dollars that I'm going to spend on building my extended pantry, what should I buy? You are going to look for ingredients that are the most versatile, and you can use for the most number of recipes so okay. you're not going to go out and buy oh let me think of something that's incredibly not versatile steak sauce well okay. actually that's a little versatile <laughs> well, all right something then, that can only use for one thing well you're gonna you want to buy items that are going to be very shelf stable things mm -hmm. that are going to last it's something mm -hmm. and it may not be something you can freeze because how much can you put in your freezer unless you have a big huge uh, right. you know, a big huge 10 10 cubic foot freezers or something. So we, we try to buy mostly dry goods, things that, that we can store very easily. You can also, store... though, you could think about tomato products, too, because mm -hmm. those yeah. are very versatile. Absolutely. Tomato products, five pound bag of flour or a bigger bag of flour than that. Uh, sugar, um, corn, cornmeal. Mm -hmm. People forget cornmeal. Cornmeal is incredibly versatile. You can use it for a whole lot of things. Think of something that you can't use just for one specific type of recipe. It's going to be something that's going to last a while. You're going to be able to use it for a number in a number of different ways. That's where you want to start. Okay. All right. Well, it's time to give away an apron note. Now, I got the message from uh, Mickey Blue Skies about the apron note. Let me find it. So she says the winner for the apron note is... Susan Henry. Yay, Susan. Oh, Susan Henry is the winner of the apron note. And um, for those of you who don't know what an apron note is, um, these apron notes come from Apron Diva. And we put a note in with every order because we feel like so often homemakers feel like they're not appreciated or they're undervalued. And so we want the homemaker to feel like this note is a message from their dearest friend. We have 14 different notes. And so the notes are selected randomly. But I picked this note today specifically for this topic. And so this note is you are the COO of your home. So own it. So what does that mean to you? And then in the chat, let's have you guys tell us in the chat how this note is resonating with you. And then while you guys are uh, typing in the chat, if you could let us know how this note resonates with you, you are the COO of your home. So own it. All right. I love it. So um, I actually I have referred to myself as that a time or two through the years. <laughs> And part of a COO's job is to do is to set the tone of the business. Take it's charge. to set the budget of the business. It's to set the agenda for the business. And it's to set the direction of the business. Yes. Those are the things that a COO does. Yes. So you need to take charge of doing that for your home. And you know what? And I always, I first started out, the first thing was set the tone. You know why? Because 
look, as a homemaker, the way that you observe your role is going to show in every other aspect of what you do in your home. And if you find your job as a homemaker to be a joy, guess what? The rest of your family will also find joy. That's why we always tell our viewers, we live with a joy and abundance on a budget. Because when I decided to stay home, we knew we wouldn't have a lot of money. But my husband said, we will raise these boys with a lot of fun. And we set out to do that. And I think we did a pretty good job. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, listen, so now you guys will also get a copy of this apron note. Yay. So uh, send me your your um, address. So I need to get your mailing address. And then the winner was Susan Henry as well. So she was asking how she claims her prize. And what you will do is you will send me your mailing address at this email address. Don't put it in the chat, but put your mailing address, like send me an email with your mailing address, and then I will mail it out um, to you and you'll get it in the mail with a nice little note from me. So and you'll each get the same note. So I'll set that aside there. And then also just a quick reminder that our recipe aprons, our recipe bundle is on sale. And I think there was another question, which I don't see. There was a, let me go over here back to the comments. Okay. Ronnie Weaver says she compared bulk, bulk Sam's prices and regular Walmart prices and the yearly fee wasn't worth it for her. Sam's was an hour drive from where she lives. That was the question. I remember now I saw the question earlier and the question was something about whether or not a Sam's Club or Aldi membership was the same. That was it. Um, I'm not sure who's, who made it, but Mickey Blue Skies, that little bing was her sending me the question. And it was, is it worth it to buy one of those memberships? What's your thought on that? That's a great question. You want to take that real quick? Uh, for many, many years, we had a Sam's Club membership. Uh, it started when Hope was working at the radio station. It was free at that time because she was under that, that kind of that, that flag. We got used to buying the bulk items there. And they, we found them to be a little cheaper than they would be otherwise. Mm -hmm. But this last year, we did not renew our subscription with them because we were doing so well with buying the bulk goods from the Amish country okay. store. And actually, they were cheaper. Uh, but for instance, we buy 50 pounds of popcorn and the popcorn had gone up substantially at Sam's. Mm -hmm. But the price that they were offering it at the Amish store was the old price that we had paid about 10 years previously. So oh. we decided to give it a shot and try not having that Sam's Club membership. And so far, we've done pretty well without it. Now, here's how we have always, every year we made the decision. You know, it comes around and they start sending you that notice that says, your membership is due. And you're like, should I do this? Should I not do this? So here's what we did. Here was the process. We made a list of everything that we regularly bought at Sam's. Now, Sam's can be like one of those, you know, those shiny object stores. You know what I'm saying? Or Costco. So, yeah. And Costco, too. Yeah. You can walk in for one thing, walk out with 10, and all of a sudden you've dropped 200 bucks. So you need to know <laughs> that you walk into Sam's with a list and you stick to the list. So make a list of all the things you regularly buy there. Then source each one of those items. See if you can find those items less expensively any place else. Now, once you fill in the other side of the chart with, okay, here's what I would pay at this store and here's what I pay at this store, you gotta do a little bit of math sometime because the Sam's like, mm -hmm. you know, their 25 pound bag is something and you're going to go to Aldi's and you're going to get, you know, 16 ounces. So do the math. So you're comparing apples to apples, ounces to ounces, so to speak, and see if it actually adds up. Our goal was always if we weren't saving at least the amount of the membership every year, we wouldn't renew. OK, that makes perfect sense. So that answers that question pretty well. Thank you for that. Let me ask you something else. Um, one of the things you talked about in one of your videos, and I watched so many of them now, I can't tell you which one it was, <laughs> but you talked about when you're eating from your pantry, you should be looking for new sources 
And when the stream dries up, look for another stream. Can you guys expound on that a little bit? I just love that. And you said, when the stream dries up, look for another stream. We, so we've, had, about we, that. we've had so many streams dry up in the <laughs> yeah. past where, where we had a really good source for food. And then all of a sudden it's gone. One of them was the old Amish store. There was another store there uh, in, it was actually in Cuba, Illinois. And uh, those people moved and it went out of business for a time. So we mm -hmm. had to find some other mm -hmm. sources. And Hope, why don't you talk about how you find other sources? Okay, so so first I'll tell you that, so when a stream dries up, th that actually is from a Bible story. It's from a story from the Bible, the, the prophet Elijah um, went and um, gave a really bad king, like the bad news that he was a bad king and <laughs> God was sending a drought to the land. Ahab. And it was Ahab, that's yeah. right, bad king. <laughs> And, uh, and God said, so I want you to go into the desert and hang out there because there's a stream there. So he's there, he's hanging out, he's praising God. There's a stream. God sending him food from ravens every day. And he wakes up one morning, the stream's dried up. And he's like, hey, God, stream dried up. <laughs> and God said, okay, so now I want you to walk 100 miles north and I want you to find, a, a, God sent him to a new source. So whenever we use that story and we have for years, when something happens and a way that we've been doing things in order to save money, all of a sudden is not available to us. We have learned to just look at each other and say, well, stream dried up. And because we believe our source is not the stream, but the source is the provider, which for us is God as Christians. Um, but you need to believe, um, regardless whether you're a person of faith or not, you need to understand that there are other streams out there. And that's why we say, go and look for other streams because other streams exist, but sometimes you need to look around to find them. Okay, here's another question. And it's from a viewer that says, I haven't been stocking up and now I'm getting worried about the rise in food prices. What should I do now? Is it too late for me to come up with a plan? No, it's never too late to come up with a plan. <laughs> no, in fact, it, you know, we, we talk about this, I think it was on our last video, that no matter how much you stock up in your house, inflation is going to catch up with you because eventually you're going to have to restock at the current prices. So when you're stocking up, uh, I compare it at like a staircase to an escalator. So an escalator is going up at a constant rate all the time. And that would represent our inflation right now. Mm -hmm. It's about 7.8% for food, most food in, in the United States. Now, uh, a staircase, you jump, you walk up one step and then you have a little plateau. Mm -hmm. That jumping up that one step or walking up that one step would be when you purchase the item. Now you're on a plateau while you're using it. So you, you freeze it for that period of time. Then you have to go back up that step. So basically a, a pantry allows you to kind of slow it down a little bit. It gives you some time also maybe to look for another source or you can buy food at a cheaper price than what maybe some of the grocery stores are selling it for. Okay, I like that. Now, this question I want to ask real quick too, and it's similar to one we had earlier. And um, the person's in a position to start putting more money into grocery budget mm -hmm. and building out the pantry and where should they spend the money? And in one of your videos, you talked about gaps. Can you explain that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the purpose of a pantry, we talked about that pantry is, is a stop gap for you. It's to get you through from one, from point A to point B. Now a pantry cannot do its job if you do not have the pantry organized. Always organize your pantry just like it was a grocery store. So have the baking items in one area, have the canned goods in one area, have the canned beans and corn in one area, have the sweeteners in one area, um, have the mixes in one area. Make sure that it's all organized and make sure when you get home from the grocery store, just take a black marker right? The date that you purchased that item on the top of that can and make sure that you rotate it. So the stuff that's been in there for a while is going to come to the front. You're going to put your new stuff to the back. You should be able to look in your pantry and in about 30 seconds, be able to tell what's in there and what not. We just, we just actually had this happen because we have a fairly well-stocked pantry, as you might imagine, but I've mm -hmm. been eating at it a little bit and I opened the pantry and immediately I saw this gap where the canned tomatoes were. And I said, oh, Larry, there's like 
five cans of tomatoes in there. And there were a lot more than that, you know, when we started the year. And I said, we we need this. We have a gap. We have a gap. Okay. So you need to know where those gaps are. And the purpose of that extra money should, first of all, be to fill your gaps so you know what is missing from your pantry. Now, if you don't have a pantry at all, the first thing I tell people is you need to create a prioritized pantry list. And okay. anybody that watches our program for any length of time, our channel knows that my favorite word in the world is prioritized. And so when something is prioritized, the most important things go to the top of the list. So whenever you have any list for anything, whether it's a list of goals, a list of food, a list of, of uh, tasks you need to do, whatever that list is, every list you make needs to be prioritized with the most important items at the top of the list. Now, when you create that pantry list, you're going to go, oh, wait, the most important thing is, let's say, flour because I know I'm going to be able to bake bread, make right. rolls, do all kinds of stuff. So make sure you have a prioritized list of what you really want to put in your pantry and start filling it from the top down. I, I'd like to give an example of one item that we stock in the pantry and how Hope gets it. She mentioned the canned tomatoes. Well, the way we normally get the canned tomatoes, we have a big lot store in town. She's a member. What kind of a membership is it? Oh, it's just, their, it's just their frequent flyer card, for lack of a better word. It's it's their 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 card for um, like, I don't know, they send you coupons and stuff. Like yeah. their Kroger Plus card. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. And then so what happens is she'll get a notice in her email that on Friday and Saturday, they're going to have 20% off. So we'll look around the house, make a list. We'll both go out and we'll just buy those items that we need to stock the pantry up on. We might buy 20 or 30 cans of no salt tomatoes in the can if they got a pretty good price on them with a 20 percent off it is a good mm -hmm. price mm -hmm. right now they're out of them so we haven't been able to, <laughs> to get them so we're kind of relying on fresh tomatoes that come our way here and there i have a gap i'm waiting to fill <laughs> yeah okay all right well listen you heard the timer so it's now it's time for the lightning round Yay! Right. <laughs> all right, now. bring it on all right <laughs> Aldi, oh, wait a minute. Let me get this off. Aldi or Kroger? Oh, Aldi. Aldi. Aldi, yeah. They're definitely cheaper on almost everything. Carrot dogs or stuffed collard greens? Oh, oh, that's really hard. Um, I'm going to say carrot dogs. Would you say carrot dogs? Probably carrot dogs, but you know, the stuffed collard greens would go farther. They would, they would <laughs> I think, last longer as far as... Uh, uh, they would make a little more bold. Because I love them both. They're both good. Okay. Roasted root vegetables or black bean burgers? Oh, oh black, black bean, bean burgers. burgers. Okay. Dehydrated or frozen? Oh. I would say frozen. Oh, probably frozen. I freeze more than I dehydrate, but dehydrating, it's got a really long shelf life. So yeah, it does hard. take a lot of time to and dehydrate. And if the electricity goes off, there's not a problem. Yeah. So, okay. Well, well, frozen, frozen I, is quicker though yeah. you know, to, to prepare and do it. So. Coffee or espresso? Coffee, coffee, coffee for sure. Okay. Yes. Hamburger helper or ancient harvest organic quinoa? Oh, definitely. Uh, <laughs> the quinoa, 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 hands down. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't there some story about the hamburger helper? Oh, well, I don't know. I mean, we don't we don't really buy hamburger helper. Of course, I mean, if we would get it, then we wouldn't hamburger it because we're <laughs> vegan. So, <laughs> all right. Well, listen, is there anything you guys want to add? No, you know what? We should invite your viewers to hang out with us. We got a um, live, we got a program on today. We are so our time, so our time. our uh, we always have a live premiere on Thursdays and Mondays at eight o'clock. That's Central, Central time. Standard Time. So that's coming up for us in about twenty seven minutes here. Uh, but this month we are doing a uh, February grocery challenge. So y'all might find that intriguing. We are. Um, we're inviting our viewers to set their own goals for their groceries in February. And then we're cheering them along and we will leave you like tips and strategies. And then every Thursday, I am showing you my grocery haul from Friday and um, showing you how we are feeding our family this month for $50 a week. And that includes breakfast, lunch, dinner and snacks for the entire wow. 
week. So along the way, I am giving lots of tips and strategies as to how to actually just stretch what you are able to get from the grocery store in the first place and make it go farther. And one of the things that Hope is taking into consideration on this challenge is not just the amount of groceries that we're buying usually now on a Friday night, but also she'll take the amount of money that we've spent on items in our pantry and include that in with it. So we're coming right up to $50. It's a week. an actual $50 grocery budget. So it's not just I'm spending $50 at the store every week. It's I'm spending $20 or $30 at the store every week and then adding items from my pantry that account for the rest of that $50. So on Thursday nights, we usually talk about what we brought home and how Hope's prepared and what kind of recipes she made throughout the week to make it work. Yep, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Y'all yeah. should come join us. We'd love okay. it. Okay, well, we'll certainly be off in time enough for you guys to jump off here and go over there and check out their live stream. We got one last question and Linda Barrett says, do you have a set minimum that you let items go down to before restocking? That's a good question. Yeah, about a half a dozen. I don't like to let anything go down below a half a dozen when it comes to like canned goods and stuff like that. Uh, our goal is always to have our pantry stocked with enough food so that we could go for three months without hitting the grocery store at all if we absolutely didn't need to. So um, like we have, I mean, being vegan, we have a lot of grains and we have a lot of beans in that pantry. So um, one of the things that I do have is, um, so I have a uh, pantry stock up workbook. So if you guys are watching and you're thinking, I could use like a checklist. That's what this workbook is. So, and I think Denise has the link to it. She'll put the link in the show notes. Right and you're welcome to press it's absolutely free. It is a free pantry stock up workbook. It'll kind of get you going in the right direction. I've got like 52 of the things you really need to have in your pantry at all times. And then I've got a checklist, a separate checklist for herbs and spices. Because that's one of the things that I tell people is, look, Herbs and spices can go a long way in making food that is not that exciting into something that truly is exciting. So I like to have a lot of uh, herbs and spices on hand. Okay. And I had that. There we go. And there is the, um, the link for it. I showed the page. You, were you able to see it when I showed the page? Yep, I did. Okay. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys so much for joining us. I really do. I could keep you guys on here for another hour chatting, but I know you got your own show to do. So I so appreciate your joining us tonight. And uh, will I be able to find your address on your about page or do you need to send it to me with, through my email so that I can send you your apron note? Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm, I don't think it's on our about page, but I'll, I'll send it to you. Okay, so just email me e email me that at, uh, well, we've been emailing each other, so you know how to email me. Yeah. So thank you guys so much, and I will uh, see you next time. Thank well, you. Thanks. It was awesome hanging out with y'all. We'd thanks love to come for, back again. Thanks for having us on. Thanks. You are so welcome. Guys, were they not amazing? Oh, my goodness. I tell you what, I learned so much from binge watching their videos while I was getting ready for the show. And I have to tell you, just listening to them made me rethink some of the things that I was doing, which included not having a grocery budget. And you know, my husband has been a little bit, I think, I don't wanna say perturbed because he hasn't like been irritated or about it or anything like that. But I think he's been wishing that I would set a budget for groceries and try to stick within that because he's been saying the budget word quite a bit lately. So I really learned a lot from that. So I'm really glad. Tara said this was very educational and delightful. And isn't they just the cutest couple? I just love them. And Ronnie says another great show. Um, the name of their channel, again, is Under the Median. Let me show it again. I'm going to share it again so that you guys can see it because their show comes on tonight at, well, the next 15 minutes. Uh, it'll be on. So here's the little reminder right there, feeding a family of four on $50 a week. So I'm really interested in looking to see what she's managed to do this week. So there's that. And let's see what else. Um, so, Ronnie, you are quite welcome. And um, 
Thank you, Bonnie. She says that the best questions. I appreciate that. And I think that is it. So now let's say Deborah Tone Collins said she sets the tone in her home by smiling while she plants her garden and starting up, um, starting herself with raising chickens for eggs and then taking care of elderly parents. So when we talk about being the COO or the chief operating officer of your home, so own it, it's all of that. I love the description that Hope gave regarding being the COO of your home. So that's pretty good there too. And I think that is it. So Deb says she joined late, but she certainly enjoyed it. This was a great show. So if you guys can think about anybody else you want me to have on, let me know and I'll reach out. That's how we got them. Uh, Kate suggested that I have them on and they were amazing. So listen, uh, just as a reminder, our question of the day is going to be, what will you do to inflation proof your pantry? You guys have gotten several great ideas. So what are you going to do to inflation proof your pantry? Tell me in the comment section or leave me a chat. Also, be sure and circle back and check out my homemaker's journal where I did a reflection on homemaking and then also planning for the homemaker. And don't forget to visit us at www.aprondiva.com. And next week, Dana K. White is going to be on and we have a book to give away organizing for the rest of us. Remember, Dana K. White was supposed to be on a couple of weeks ago and she had to reschedule. So she's going to be on next week and she's already sent me the book for the giveaway. And that is it. I will see you guys next time. Good night.